Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Joe and welcome to a brand new video. Now the reception on the last video I did on this was fantastic. You guys seem to love the video of things you probably did when you started out playing TF2. The mistakes that new players tend to make. And I said if you guys have any suggestions, if you want me to do another one of things that should be included, then to include it in the comments below. And you guys absolutely smashed it. There was a bunch of new ideas that could be included in this episode. So this is going to be kind of like a part two to that video so if you haven't checked it out I'd recommend you go and do so in case you're missing something that uh, you think is a pretty obvious one however there's a bunch of new ones here so without further ado we should just get straight into it so the first one kind of relates back to the first episode in the first episode I said this this next one says delete in your haunted metal scrap and this is one I relate to all too much however I was actually blessed enough for valve to actually give me another haunted metal scrap and something you guys seem to be very adamant on me missing out was deleting your gibbous. And I thought this kind of fell under the same thing of deleting an untradeable item that you can't get again. But it's too big of a thing to mention as it seems so many of you guys actually did delete your gibbous. So deleting your gibbous. And there is a way you can get it back um, as I did with the haunted metal scrap. But I think generally most people think they're never going to wear the hat. Uh, there's no point in having it. And it's just taking up backpack space. As I said, when you first start the game, and your backpack is very small and you kind of think to yourself there's no point in keeping this untradeable item that I'm never going to use so you just delete it and then bam you've lost your gibbous forever and a lot of people did this with their mercenary badge as well and that uh, is like a the mercenary badge is a way where you can tell when you started playing the game and a lot of people deleted that so they don't have like an accurate kind of like source to see when they started playing the game but yeah deleting a gibbous and just generally untradeable achievement items has got to be up there with one of the most common mistakes that people make when they start off playing tf2 if you just started playing tf2 and you're watching this video please for the love of god do not delete any of the untradeable items because you may regret it in a few years time this next one is one that I completely forgot about in the first video, but I relate to very personally. This is trying to flare jump with the normal flare gun. And we've all seen a sketch check video back in the day and thought, wow, that's amazing. I can't wait to go and make plays like that. Not realizing that he was using the detonator. And the disappointment when you go to flare jump with the normal flare gun and just absolutely nothing happens. Yeah, it's completely immeasurable. My disappointment is immeasurable and my day is ruined. This next one says, a common mistake we all made is thinking about climbing ladders. And I mean, this is so true. I can't think of many shooting games where you can't climb ladders. For example, every single Call of Duty, you see a ladder, you climb up it. For some reason in TF2, you can't climb ladders. You see a ladder, you try your best, you jump at it, you, you press all the buttons on your keyboard to no avail. So that's definitely a mistake I think near enough everyone's probably made. This next one I remember seeing so, so many times, and I still see it to this day if ever you go in a trade server. If you stay in a trade server for an hour or two, you will more than likely see at least one person saying this in the chat. And this comment simply said one word exclamation mark give me all now for whatever reason people thought that just joining a server typing exclamation mark give me all would give you every single item in team fortress 2 i don't know where this came from i don't know where the rumor started it may have been an achievement servers where you type exclamation mark unlock or whatever and get a bunch of achievement items but for whatever reason people thought exclamation mark give me all would give you every single item in team fortress 2 Regardless of backpack space, you can have one page in your backpack and somehow unlock 2,000 plus items. Like, the logistics of it don't make sense, but it didn't stop people trying it. And this, you'd often see the same people typing it maybe five or ten times, maybe thinking they typed it wrong or something, when in reality it's just not going to work and it never has worked. Up next is one that not only happened to me in CSGO, but I can imagine this happened to anyone who tried to start surfing in Team Fortress 2. This is going to be pressing W while surfing. You see a ramp in front of you, you think, hey, if I just run into the ramp and hold W, I'll get extra speed, when in reality, if you touch a W key, you're going to mess up your surf. But anyone who hasn't tried surfing, essentially, you don't hold W when you surf. It's all about holding your arrow keys, so A and D, when you're like leaning into the ramp. Holding W completely messes it up this next one is one that i genuinely did myself and then i looked back on a few months later when i was properly into trading and heavily regretted 
This one is crafting untradeable metal. So, for example, you have an untradeable scrap from getting like an achievement weapon and crafting it into a scrap. You craft that scrap into a reclaimed, you craft that reclaimed into a refined, and then you could even take it further than that and craft that refined into a hat. Then you're stuck with an untradeable craft hat. What would be even more of a kick in the teeth when you're doing this is if when you craft that untradeable refined and put it into a craft hat, you end up getting something really good. And this is like a double-edged sword because you could get something like a dead of night which would be fantastic to use you get a free dead of night essentially that you can never trade away but that's the thing you can never trade it away so if you get a profitable craft you're kind of stuck with it and then you lose out on a potential profit but i'd never really recommend crafting with refined anyway i know i do it for my hat crafting series but that's just because it's a bit more entertaining to watch and craft in hats together but yeah i know crafting untradeable refined is something that most people have done because they never really see a fault in it they never think they'll need to be actually be able to trade it i thought this comment here was really interesting this person says i remember i tried to throw a sapper in spawn like in meet the spy and i was like why can't i throw it Maybe right click, middle mouse button, and that's a very good point, you know, if you remember in Meet the Spy, he slides the sapper across the floor, and it destroys the sentry gun, so if you watched the video of Meet the Spy, or any of the meet this, you may think, hey, maybe that's an actual feature in game, but it's just not, you can't throw your sapper, you can't slide it across the floor, and that's probably a mistake some other people have made as well, if they watched the meet the videos before they actually played the game. Honestly, lads, I genuinely don't understand how I missed these ones out last time. These ones are absolutely imperative in this type of video. So many people commented saying something along the lines of trying to kill someone with your rocket jumper or trying to kill someone with your sticky jumper. Now, of course, these weapons don't do damage to other players. These weapons are purely used for sticky jumping and rocket jumping, as the names would suggest. But when you first equip them and you're first using them, you think to yourself, they look like a normal sticky bomb launcher, they look like a rocket jumper. And maybe when you start playing the game and you get a rocket jumper or you get a sticky jumper from a drop, you don't necessarily know what either of those functions are. So you'll be there with your orange and white striped weapons spamming people with the rocket launcher, but little do you know, it's never going to do any damage. And I know this is one so many people have probably experienced. I know for a fact myself, I probably experienced it. And there's this screenshot, I'll put it on the screen if I can find it, but if not, it's some guy with a rocket jumper in MVM shooting at a tank, and I just thought it was such a great screenshot. So golden. This next comment is just blow after blow of pure sadness. It says, I had the orange box and didn't ever install it for like a year or so. Got the proof of purchase, which by the way is a item in Team Fortress 2 that you could only obtain through purchasing TF2 when it wasn't free to play, whether that's through the orange box or whatever. That is how you get the proof of purchase. So no one can really get it these days. So they started playing, got the gibbous, got free paint, painted the gibbous, as I mentioned in the last video, turned the proof of purchase into scrap to make a scout hat. Funny thing is, this became his favorite hat to this day, the Hermes, and later deleted to make room for a tradable Hermes. So he painted his gibbous, he deleted his proof of purchase to craft it for an untradable Hermes, which he then deleted to make room for a tradable one. Like, there is three heartbreaking things there. But either way, I'm sure a few people out there probably deleted their proof of purchase, because it's not like a crazy looking hat, but when you look at it now, how long ago you must have needed to have purchased Team Fortress 2 to obtain the hat, it's a pretty rare item. You don't really see a lot of people with it. And maybe that's why, because a lot of people deleted it. And this last one, guys, is something that I feel like a lot of you may even still be able to relate to now is leaving your field of view at stock settings and your field of view essentially the higher it is the further out the camera is essentially so the the wider lens let's say the camera is so you can actually see much more with a higher field of view and you don't realize until you look at a before and after of just how effective heightening your field of view is and then there's view model field of view as well i personally use min view models that was added into the game relatively recently in the past couple years and I never looked back I love min view models and that's just something I feel like a lot of you may not have changed is the 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 default field of view which I think is 60 or 65 compared to like a 90 the difference is crazy but guys, that is just about it for this video. If you did enjoy them, please do remember to leave a like and let me know your thoughts down below. If you have any other suggestions of things that new players do or mistakes that new players make when they get into Team Fortress 2, leave them in the comments below. And if there's enough useful ones, I may even be able to make a third episode. Guys, that is just about it. Thank you again so much for watching and peace.